Good morning. Today, Larry and I are going to put on these new chisel teeth onto our chisel plows behind us. All right. Let's work. It's the 2020 crop year. My name is Matthew Sliger. That's right, we're out in California planting rice by air. Welcome to the rice fields. Ride with me from planting to harvest. This is California Rice, my friends. You're watching Rice Farming TV. First though, let's collect the tools that we're going to need and go over our strategy on how we're going to install these new chisel teeth. Old bearings, bearing housing, bank out parts, sickle sections, whatever that is, spray suits, ram stops, links for chains, old chains, hydraulic hoses, coffee, yes, new bolts. Normal brush, broom brush, wire brush, yes. Air compressor, an oil pan to organize nuts, bolts, and washers, heavy hammer, socket, cheater pipe, air gun, coffee can. All right, we got all of our tools. Now let's go into how we're installing these chisel teeth. We take the wire brush to remove that dirt so that the new chisel tooth will rest up nicely against the shank here. And then it's pretty simple. Wonderful. Okay, so we made great progress. This pull chisel is done. This pull chisel over here is done. Got all the teeth, brand new ones, on and assembled. However, now we've gotten to this three point. As you can see, the three point sagged. The plow chisel is resting on the ground. We don't have the room to get the teeth on. So, we're gonna have to start her up. 340 case magnum. And to simply hit this button here to lift the three point up. And that is going to give us the clearance to get our new teeth on. Let's do it. Let's come around this way and I can show you the offset left right shanks. So here you got the right handed shanks throwing dirt this way and then in the next row over you see how that shank is bent this way, left handed one. And then finally in the back row we've got it again throwing it off to the right just as the first row. Got a little overcast on us, that's supposed to be the sun. Anyway, we got all the chisel teeth on the chisel plows that we attacked today. And after we get the chisel teeth all attached to the chisel shanks, Larry goes back and hand tightens them with a socket and cheater pipe, hammering the bolts in, making sure they recess in and sit nicely, and we get an extra tight couple turns on those bolts. So, we've got the 260 hooked up to the pull chisel, case 245, hooked up to this pole chisel and the case 340 hooked up to this three point. And actually, now that the teeth are on it, I can drop it down, so, hmm. Now with this three point though, we're not exactly done. See, we took off a couple extensions that would otherwise bolt on right here just because we use this chisel plow in the fall after harvest to incorporate the straw into the soil before we flooded it. You guys remember that video, don't you? Let 
link is in the description. So we still need to attach the extensions on each side and guide wheels for this three-point chisel plow. The reason we took the extension and guide wheels off, because in the fall we do a more aggressive rip because we're only going to make one pass through the field, whereas in the springtime we make two passes with the chisel plow, so we make a less aggressive rip, and therefore we're able to have a couple extra shanks on here. It's not gonna bog down the tractor at all. Remember that mud puddle from a couple episodes ago? As you can see, it's right in the middle of a mud hole, so that'll happen in a couple days. Well, it's already cleared up and just needed to dry out a little bit, and we can hook this three-point chisel up to a tractor, lift it up, and we're not gonna completely replace the chisel teeth on this one because we still have a good point on the other side of this chisel tooth. So we're just going to rotate it. So the chisel plows are looking pretty good. They pretty much all have new teeth, but we still are going to check a few things. Gonna make sure none of the springs are cracked, that the chisel shanks don't have too much play on them, meaning that they're getting bored out here. We're gonna check the frame over for cracks. We're gonna make sure the guide wheels are on tight. We'll check the hydraulic ram here for any leaks, make sure it can lift and lower the chisel how we want it to. We'll check the drawbar pins, make sure this isn't getting rubbed out and there's no play here. Just making sure that the hitch here is in good condition. And once we're done with the chisel plows, we'll probably run through all the tractors here, change the engine oil, the engine oil filters, the fuel filters, the water filters, check the fluids essentially, and go over, tighten nuts and bolts, and make sure all the hoses, hose clamps, and everything are down tight on our tractors here. And of course, like last year, this year we're running Case 260, Case 245, the other Case 260, Case 340, the John Deere 8640, if we need to, the John Deere 70, nah, just kidding. And finally, the old Case 7240. That we're usually ridging or pulling drains with. Not too much heavy stuff. Right now it's hooked up to the mower. So to close out this episode, I wanted to run over to the field that we were first draining the first episode of this 2020 crop year. This here is the grand finale of the field. We've connected all the drains open. Whoa, rabbit. Remember I told you it was the grand finale of the field, pulling the boards on the drain riser and letting all that water run out. I actually saw that rabbit. You remember that? Let's go over to that same spot and just check out the progress of the draining just after a few days. Come on. There's our discs. We'll be working on those pretty soon, checking those over just as we had done with the chisel plows. There's the land planes. We'll also be checking those over key points, but we'll go over that in a future video. Wow, so pretty good. Now, as you can see, these fields have hardly any water standing on them. That's great. The drains worked well. However, if it rains, what this is telling us is if it rains a couple inches, two, three, four inches, that these drains, this infrastructure that we have in is gonna move that water right off the field and hopefully dry it out. So it's not like we're not hoping for rains. In fact, quite the opposite. We are hoping for rains. We need more rain. We need more snowpack as well. We'll get into that in a future episode. But right now, what we do know is that we have an infrastructure, a draining infrastructure that will carry any rainfall off this field rapidly, as you can see. Good. All right. That rounds out this episode of Rice Farming TV. I hope you all enjoyed. I'm doing daily vlogs, I suppose you could say that, on my Facebook page, Rice Farming TV on Facebook. So if you're not on Facebook, check that out. I'm kind of doing two different styles of content on each platform, YouTube and Facebook. I've been posting there, trying to get it regular. So if you wanna check those out, please do. Thanks for watching this episode. If you'd like to give me a thumbs up, if not, well, take care anyway. I'll see you in the next episode as we're going to continue working on our tractors and implements, getting them ready for spring planting now that our fields are drying out and have that drying infrastructure in place. We can rest easy knowing any rainfall that comes is going to wash right off. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.